All right, good morning. So good morning and welcome back to JPC, Spiritual Talk, Mr. Jerry Campbell. So this morning, the power of faith, lessons from Acts chapter three. So we'll be in Acts three this morning. And here's a small introduction where we get into our prayer and into the teaching. As I transition from a period of deep reflection to a season of active teaching, I find myself returning to the transformative power of scripture. But Acts chapter three is my focal point this morning. With my theological studies resuming next week and Sunday school preparations underway, this passage offers a profound reminder of the faith that empowers, heals, and encourages us all to serve. This study will guide us through the miraculous healing at the temple gate, revealing timeless lessons. I look forward to exploring with you all in our upcoming sessions. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to ask the Lord. And now we're going to ask the Lord to shine into hearts so loving master to pure life your divine knowledge and open up the eyes of our mind and that we may understand your teachings in the scripture help us to apply what we learn that you're having conquered sinful desires that we may pursue a spiritual way of life thinking and doing all the things you're pleasing to you your christ your god your life and to you your glory father son holy spirit now and forever sages amen lord is our shepherd all right good morning welcome back so great is his faithfulness indeed the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. Christ is truly in our midst. The true definition of minister is to serve someone else's will. My pleasure to bring you all God's word each and every day. So this morning, as I shared the screen over, we're going to be in the Orthodox Study Bible. Right? <clears throat> so as I'm sharing over, thank you all again for following. So Acts chapter 3. So I'm going to break it down. As I follow the Orthodox Study Bible, right? So as I transition myself back into teaching, right? So as we zoom in, Acts chapter 3, a lame man healed, right? So let's read the first, was it 10 verses, right? So a lame man is healed. And it says, now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength so he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with him walking leaping and praising god and all the people saw him walking and praising god and then they all knew that it was he who said begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were all filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him, to him, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful. So we started out in verse one, right? It was talking about at the hour of prayer, talking about the ninth hour, right? So the ninth hour is three o'clock. So the apostles were what? Observing regular Jewish hours of prayer, just as believers had done for centuries, right? So let's look at right here in Psalms 55. Starting at verse 16, it says, As for me, I'll call upon God, and the Lord shall save me evening and morning and at noon. I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. Even in Daniel. Starting in verse 10, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home in his upper room, and his windows opened toward Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as his customs since early days. These men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Beautiful. All right, so if we get back here to Acts 3. Okay? So the practice of praying at first, 6 a.m., the third hour is 9 a.m., the sixth hour is noon, and the ninth hour is 3 o'clock. 
The hours of the day carried over and to the church from the start. Even this practice, right? So even this practice continues to this day in the in, in Orthodox churches and private prayers and monasteries and also in some parishes. Right? Let's look at Acts. Get it pulled up here. So Acts 10. Let's look at verse 3. And it says, about the ninth hour of the day, he saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him, Cornelius. In verse 9, the next day as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter, up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And then we can look at verse 30. In verse 30, so Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, the man stood before me in bright clothing. The first 10 verses that we read, right? We read that the apostles were participating not only what in preaching and teaching, right? But also in healing as well. The sacrament of healing manifests God's presence in the church and confirms the message of the gospel. Beautiful, beautiful. In verse six, it talk, in verse six, it said, then Peter said, silver and gold do not have. But what I do have, I'll give to you in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, rise and walk. So in the name, right, let's look at John. Add that pulled up to you. So John, chapter 14, verses 13 through 14, it says, And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In the, name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right, let's get back to our reading here. Let's go back to Acts. Now, starting in verse 11, right? Verse 11. And let's go ahead and finish up the reading. Then we'll get to the teaching. So preaching in Solomon. Four. Now as a lame man who was healed held onto Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glor glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go, but you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead, of which we are all witnesses. And in his name, through faith, in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets, the Christ would suffer. He was thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so the times ref refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said to the fathers, the Lord your God will raise up, for you, a prophet like me, from your brethren, him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And it, sh and it shall be that every soul who will not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and all those who follow, as many as have spoken, have also foretold these days. You're the sons, the prophets you know, the, of the covenant, which God made with our father, saying to Abraham. And you, your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from your inequities. Beautiful. Beautiful. So in verse 11, right? So Solomon's porch, right? Solomon's court, porch. That was a temple area. Okay? And then we get into verse 12 through 26. What we see is Peter's sermon, right? So Peter's sermon. Starting in verse 12, 
It clarifies several key truths concerning Jesus. One, he reveals the identity of Jesus by whose power the lame man was healed. He is God's suffering servant. Look at verse 13. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God of our fathers glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined to let him go. The Holy One. Verse 14, right? But you denied the Holy One. So the Holy One of God, the Prince of Life, that was also in verse 15, right? The Prince of Life. Stay with me. The Christ foretold by the prophets. That was in verse 18. Foretold by the prophets. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that Christ would suffer he has thus fulfilled. Two, as prophesied, Christ was rejected for the leaders had him killed. That was back in verse 15, right? Had him killed. Okay. But God raised him and the apostles are witnesses to that resurrection. That was also in verse 15. Number three, the rejection of Christ shows profound ignorance of God's saving activity, Right? So the rejection of Christ shows profound ignorance of God's saving activity. That was in verses 18 through 20, right? So 18 through 20, it's talking about that. Lastly, the only saving response the people can make is to what? Repent and what? Be converted. That was in verse 19. Repent, therefore, be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So the times refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful. So, the only saving response that people can make is to what repent, be converted, which is a thorough change of mind and heart. See, re repenting is like this. It's a radical shift, right? So it's a radical shift, right? It's a complete 360, like an about face, right? It's a radical shift from doing what is, what is doing evil to doing what is good. It's a complete change of heart, right? Remember that. It, it is a complete shift. Lastly. The rewards of the conversion include forgiveness of sins, renewal, and confidence in the glorious second coming of Christ, which is found in verses 19 through 26. And lastly, look at verse 26 before we close out with our blessing. To you first, God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from your inequities. So repentance always brings blessings from the Lord. Some fear turning away from sin makes life hard to bear. Instead, through repentance, life that was merely existence is transformed into real living. That is living in faith, love, joy, and, and confident hope. And that's where we'll end this morning. Hope you all enjoyed this. Acts chapter 3. So I'm getting my mind back into teaching and less on reflecting. Right? So thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoyed this study. As I stop to share, so thank you all again. All right, so it's a quick rundown, Acts chapter 3. Right, using the notes from the Orthodox Study Bible to help get myself back into teaching. Right? So my theological studies are starting back in a week. Here in another two weeks or so, we teaching Sunday school. So thank you all again for following. My teachings from here on out will be more teaching and less reflections. Okay? Thank you all again for following. Hope you enjoy these videos. Hope you enjoy learning more about the Bible. Thank you all again for following. I love you all so much. I love you all so much. I really do. My brothers, sisters in Christ, I love you all so much. Here's your blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, now and forever, sages, amen, Lord, our shepherd. We depart in peace in the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace be with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us, those who hate us. I love you all so much. I'm out.